Lord, help me with this. Help me with this. I had demonic forces preparing me, trying to get me to lay in a tomb that I should not have been in. So in my last video, you probably heard like I was still a of demons. Um, a guy named Isaiah, um, not a guy. I mean, he is just, he's a guy, but like uh, he's a man of God. Um, he preaches the gospel and he's not going to let your flesh leave the room without it um, being dead, which I really appreciate. <laughs> but he was preaching and he, and he cast out demons. And like, he probably heard me talk about that, like how he was preaching and demons were cast out of me and I put on an anointing and a mantle. And I kind of just wanted like to elaborate on that because I didn't really get to go into that very much. Before we got there, it was prophesied that there was gonna be a revival in Ohio. And if you guys don't know, like I live in Ohio and I am passionate to see the Lord work through in Ohio, through ministries in Ohio, for flesh to be crucified, for holiness to be at the forefront of our minds and to really just go after this because we have souls on the line, souls. So I, I'm, I'm very, very passionate about this. And so when I heard this, I was just like, yes. Like I was, I was all for it. Yes, 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 yes. So revival is breaking out in Ohio. If you don't know, it's going to happen in Jesus name. Later, the next day, um, I was in Hannah's car. We just got out of a morning service and um, we were tired, but we had been in the glory of God. So our flesh was weak, but our spirits were really, really, they were strong and um, we were having a pretty in-depth conversation in her car um, in the Chick-fil-A parking lot. <laughs> so what happened was, is I opened up about some things um, that I felt like the Lord wanted me to share with her um, because if you confess your faults to one another, you know, you'll be healed. Um, that's biblical. And this was something that I had been struggling with a long time that I wanted healed from. And I knew I could trust Hannah. And um, shout out to Hannah Williamson, by the way, if you haven't seen her channel, um, go check it out. She's a mighty woman of God and I'm appreciative for her, obe her obedience and everything she's doing. So shout out to you, Hannah. I love you so much. But I was in her car and <laughs> we were just sitting there. She's just trying to eat her Chick-fil-A. And I am like, crying but I'll just tell you the conversation we had so I had these throughout my life I've had the, the Lord has prophesied over me um, regarding my life and what he was going to do with it and and they're wonderful the prophecies were wonderful and I received them but um I felt like the, the enemy was just trying to steal them. He, he was trying to steal my joy. He, he was trying to hinder those things from coming to pass. That's that's what was happening. And I guess, like, I'll, I'll share with you what I told her, but because some of you might be struggling with the same thing. I'm a, I'm a small person. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty small. And I've been that way, like, my entire life. And on top of that, I look really young. My face, I just have, like, one of those faces, I just look young. I'm not you know, downing how I look because the Lord made me this way um, for his purpose. I don't necessarily know why, but he did. And um, this was something I was actually very insecure about. I did not think people would ever take me seriously because of how I looked and how young I was. I'm 23, if you didn't know, and I'm married and I have um, a daughter. Her name's Anna Joy and my husband's name's Garrett. And yes, I know, I don't look old enough to be married or old enough to have a one-year-old baby, but I do. And um, this was just something that I struggled with a lot. And with these prophecies that were spoken over me and that I received, I felt hindered, like so hindered. I was like, no one's gonna take me seriously. How am I supposed to fulfill these prophecies? How am I, how am I supposed to lead anybody? How, how am I supposed to do this? Like, people think I'm 13. What, what grown man or grown adult is going to listen to someone who's small and looks super young? And I just did not feel like I could do it. Like I, I started crying and weeping in her car and I was just like, Hannah, I can't do this. Like there's, I, I don't know how I'm supposed to do it. I can't do it. No one's gonna take me seriously. Just all this stuff going through my mind. So that's that was my, I guess like mental state um, two days into this revival and it was rough. I felt better 
innocence a little bit after sharing with her those things. But at the same time, I still knew like I need to be free from this. Like this was this was a demonic it was it was a strategy of the enemy. It was it was purely demonic and I knew that. But I just did not know what to do. But I um went to Isaiah Saldivar's he was speaking um, at this point in the revival, I kind of just knew like I was going to be free that night. Like I, I just knew like if I'm going to be free tonight and I was really thankful and I was happy. And I went to this service and I was at the altar. And if you remember my last video, I said he didn't have to lay hands on me. He didn't have to do anything and he did it because it was the power of God. Um, he was just obedient and the power of God moved. And what happened was, is he just started going out and the Holy Spirit was using him. And literally I was being delivered. I didn't manifest anything. Like I wasn't like shaking or puking or my eyes weren't rolling in the back of my head. I wasn't screaming. I just had my hands lifted to the Lord and I just received deliverance in that moment. And not only that, but another thing that left was a spirit of infirmity. I had severe, severe back pain for a very, very long time. It sent me to the emergency room at one point because I thought I was having a heart attack. I mean, it was crazy. It happened after I had my daughter, Anna, and the back pain, I can't even, my, my dad actually, he had a heart attack. So I knew the symptoms of a heart attack and like the signs of a heart attack. And so did my dad. And my dad, um, my family, I mean, I had, like, it was like, my arms were numb. I was having severe chest and back pain. It was crazy. I had this awful back pain. And I used to have back pain every day of my life. Like, since I had Anna for the past year, I had had back pain every day of my life. And I, I just got used to being in pain. Um, and at this conference, when he cast out the spirit of infirmity, I have not had any back pain since. I used to have to go to the chiropractor like every day. I actually planned before we left for this conference to go to the chiropractor because I wouldn't be at the chiropractor all week. So I'm like, my back is going to be completely messed up. When, when I get back, it's going to be terrible. And so I pre like, I like knew like, okay, I'm going to have to make an appointment. And I did. And I come back and I missed the appointment. I don't even think about the appointment because my back hasn't been hurting like at all. My back is like completely healed and I, I'll bend over and stuff like I'll like twist my back like randomly throughout the day. I'm like, does it still not hurt? Like, you know, I'm like, wow. So praise the Lord. So I was delivered of fear of man, which kept me from doing deliverance in public and preaching the gospel and filling the Great Commission and praying for people. And I was delivered from a spirit of infirmity, which was my back pain and completely gone. There's something else that I want to share because it was the glory of God. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. It was another healing that took place in my body. Um, this is kind of graphic in a sense, like a little bit. Um, so if you're a child and you're not like of age, like you're not 18 or like parents, you know, I guess like viewer discretion and guys like guys you might not want to hear what i'm about to talk about because this is a lady thing um so i used to have i'm going into it now so warning's over i used to have ovarian cysts and it i would always be really bloated and i'd be in a lot of pain um and i was actually during this conference i was on my cycle and I was having cramps every day, like every day. Um, and it, they, they're painful. It's not fun, like at all. When I was standing in the service, um, it was the same service uh, that Isaiah was preaching at. I was hurting, like I was in a lot of pain. And we were doing praise and worship and I literally felt I was hurting so bad and I was like, Lord, give me strength because I, I read my spirit, my flesh was weak, but my spirit was like, I want to worship you. I don't want to stop. And I felt like the Lord said, keep worshiping, keep worshiping. Do not sit down and keep going. And I did. And I kept going and my cycle had ended. Like it just ended like that day. Like I wasn't bleeding anymore. And literally I kept worshiping and blood like 
I felt it. And I was like, what in the world? What in the world? Like, why did that happen? And I didn't think anything of it, but I was like, why did that happen? And I just kept praying and worshiping. And then I stopped. And I realized like, I wasn't like in pain anymore. Like it was absolutely amazing. I wasn't hurting anymore. Um, thank you, Jesus. And um, I was healed. Like I really believe that I was healed in that moment. And we got back to the hotel and I checked and this wasn't like normal, um, like blood. It was dark, like almost like it was very, very dark. Um, and I knew that the Lord had healed me in that moment just for being obedient. Um, and it was absolutely amazing. I haven't been bloated ever since. I used to have pain like all the time, like every day down low, like where you'd have period cramps regardless if I was on my period or not. Um, and I haven't been bloated like at all. I haven't been bloated at all. I actually came home and my husband was like, your stomach looks different because I was like completely healed of that as well. It was absolutely amazing. And no one, like, no one even had to touch me. Like no one even had to lay a hand on me. No one had to even talk, no one even talked to me directly. Like when Isaiah was casting out these demons, he didn't even, I don't even think he looked at me. Like I have no idea. And they left, like infirmity left. And the Lord healed me once infirmity left when I was being obedient and, and praise and I haven't been bloated. I haven't had any pain. It has been absolutely amazing. The Lord healed me. He healed me. And I never experienced anything like that in my life before. Like, like that, like it was very, it's kind of graphic and I'm sorry. Like if you, um, you know, I'm sorry if like you watch that and you're like, oh, I don't like blood or whatever. I'm sorry, but like the Lord healed me. Like he legit healed me in that moment. So two healings took, I was delivered from like fear, fear of man and like the opinions of man. Literally, I remember Isaiah was like, someone's chained, someone's chained. And I was like, that was me. Like I was chained. Like I knew that I was chained. but I didn't want to admit it because I knew that I shouldn't have been chained. Like I was like, I wanted to be bold for the Lord and I wanted to fulfill the great commission and I had been praying and praying. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had been praying for so long for these things. I've had so many people praying for me and I felt so guilty at one point because I was so scared to pray for people in public and I was so scared to like do like fulfill these prophecies and everything and I was in pain all the time and if it wasn't my back it was you know cramping and it and I was it was terrible and I didn't know what to do and I had my husband he has been praying for me for so long he didn't pray for me so long and the Lord at that service through obedience through obedience from Isaiah through obedience from the worship team and through obedience within myself just being obedient to the Lord just being obedient to the Lord brought my freedom and it was absolutely amazing it was absolutely amazing so to go on uh, to move on because I'll just keep crying if I keep talking about it because the Lord is so good. He is so good and all honor and glory goes to him for what happened because it is no one can explain it. No one can explain it. Like it's not like you can go to a, like, a doctor and it's like, oh, here's medicine. This is what made you feel better. It was instantaneous and I have no like everything left. I mean, it's all glory to Jesus. So that happened. And after that service, after all of that, after that service, deliverance broke out in a prayer room that me and Hannah were in. Girls were freed, like completely set free from demonic forces and um, from demons. What happened in, was uh, we were praying 
and we were praying for maybe 30 minutes and a group of girls came in they went to the other end of the room and they started casting out a demon i prayed lord if you want me to go over there i'll go over there but if you don't want me to go over there i will not go over there so i continued to pray i prayed lord do not let me leave without all these girls being free do not let me leave and i continued to pray 20 minutes later me and hannah are about to go i tell hannah i feel like i should go over there i feel like we need to go over there and then i said well the Lord won't let me leave unless they're all free. And as soon as I said that, a girl fell to the floor and started manifesting a demon. I looked at Hannah and I said, looks like we're not leaving. When we go over there and demons start manifesting, girls start gaining freedom. It was absolutely amazing. A mass deliverance broke out in the Fresh Start prayer room in Peoria, Arizona. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. And the thing is, is what I'm trying to get to, is that if it wasn't for obedience, if it wasn't for obedience, I don't know. I don't know. The girls were freed through obedience. Let me tell you, if you're a Christian and the Lord is telling you just to do something, your obedience will open doors for the Lord to work and use his power. Your obedience will. I was healed and like completely set free from demonic, like I felt so chained. I was completely set free through his obedience. I was completely set free from like this ovarian stuff when the worship team obeyed and I obeyed freedom, like complete freedom and I was healed. A miraculous healing took place in my body. I was completely healed. So then the day after that, um, I, I think, I think his name is Tony and he is a also a mighty man of God and they had him preach and he had his dad's coat and if you probably won't understand this you can go back and watch it on YouTube um, on Fresh Arts channel but he had this coat and it was his dad's coat and he was talking about how wonderful of a man his dad was and he was a mighty man of God he was going through stories of things that the Lord used his dad for and one of those things was casting out demons and he when he was talking about that he started waving this coat over where i was standing and the holy spirit fell so strong on me so 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 strong like the glory of god rested on me and i fell i fell over and that was the first time i had been slain in the spirit before but I had never just collapsed under the weight and the glory of God. I had never collapsed under the weight and the glory of God. Hannah was behind me and she was like, you know, trying to catch me, but there was no point. Like I was, I could not stand, like that I could not stand. And after that, cause he said, cause, okay. So that's not like the full thing. So he waved the coat and I felt the anointing of the Lord. That's the anointing, the glory of God just was you know, like so heavy. I felt like it was on my shoulders, on, on my head. Like it was like, I mean, I, I never, I had not experienced like that before. And it was, that was amazing. But he also told us to put on a mantle. It was prophetic. It was like something. So he said to bend over and pick up your mantle and, and, and put it on. And I picked up this mantle and I, and I put it on. And I can honestly tell you, that ever since I have not been the same the next morning I don't know if more deliverance happened while I was asleep and I just woke up different I don't I have no idea what happened I woke up the next morning and I felt grace I felt like I was moving differently I felt like I was talking differently I even asked Hannah I was like do I sound different she's like like I'm like does my voice sound different and she said no and I'm like it sounds different when I talk, like in my mind. I'm like, it sounded different to me. I had such a grace on my life when I woke up. I just woke up with it. Praise the Lord. And I went out and I used to get so nervous. Like when I say so nervous to pray for people in public that weren't in a church building, I would get so nervous. And literally, I felt nothing. I didn't have like those butterflies in my stomach. I didn't feel like you know, all, all the nerves. I didn't have anything like that because I was operating, praise the Lord, through the grace of God, through the grace of God. I was not scared anymore. I was not afraid anymore. Why? I didn't care. 
I did not care. I could have cared less if the person who I asked to pray for told me no or if they said yes. I just wanted to do what God told me to do and I just wanted to be obedient. I could have cared less what anyone thought of me and I still am that way. I don't care. As long as I'm being obedient to God, that is all that matters to me. When I say I want my body to be used for the glory of God, I mean it with such sincerity. I really do. Thank you, Jesus. So I did not care anymore. That was that was a huge thing. I did not care anymore. This was my deliverance being made manifest in my life. Like I got I got to pray. I prayed for my the Uber drivers. I got to pray for them. And one of them was Mormon and they told me they were Mormon and I was like, "Have you ever had like any Christians who believe in Jesus Christ in your car?" They would all be like, "No, not I don't think so. We probably have, but no one ever talks about it." So that's something else, like, for another time. But I said, okay, well, I believe in Jesus. Can I pray for you? And they said, yes. He said, yes. This guy, who was Mormon. He said, yes. And you know what I got to pray? I prayed, Holy Spirit, draw him. Draw him to your word and draw him to your truth and draw him to Jesus Christ. I got to pray that over someone who was Mormon. Then the next Uber ride, this guy was a new age. He was a new age. And I said the same thing. Can I pray for you? I believe in Jesus Christ. And I prayed over him and I got to pray the same thing. Holy Spirit, draw him. Jesus, reveal yourself to him. I got to pray for someone who was Muslim. This girl was Muslim. She flat out told me she believed in Allah, that she was, a, that she was Muslim. And I said, I believe in Jesus Christ and I believe that he is the only Lord. Can I pray for you? Just like that. You know what she said? Yeah, you can pray for me. I got to lay hands on all these people, guys. I got to touch them. I asked first, like, can I can I put my hand on your shoulder? But still, I got to lay my hand on their shoulders and touch them. I got to touch them and pray for them. I got to lay my hands on them and pray for these. Hopefully, soon, I, 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 Jesus, thank you, but I pray for these people's salvation, and hopefully they're going to turn into sons and daughters of God. I got to pray for them. And then, when me and Hannah were at... Um, IHOP because I really wanted breakfast. We were at IHOP. Um, she got to bless a like a woman, a Jehovah's Witness. We got to minister to someone who is Jehovah's Witness. I mean, we were literally encountering every cult. I literally woke up in the morning and I felt such a grace and peace over my life that the Lord was sending people who were in cults who were in cults and we got to lay hands on them and pray for them. How amazing is that? But that was my testimony from Fresh Start Church. That was just some of the things that happened. There was a lot more that happened, but like, I just don't really know if I should go into or, um, or share because it's not all my testimony, guys. Like, Hannah was there. Um, all these other girls were there, um, so they have their own testimony that they're going to share, but that's just my point of view um, on this and from what I've seen not everything I see, not everything that happened, but a lot of it. Um, but I, when I was reading my Bible today, I was like, Lord, like, you know, how do you want me to go about this? Like, how do you want me to share this? And I was like, what do you want me to read? Like, what do you want me to read? What do you want me to study today? And for some reason, he's having me study Mark 16. And thank you, Jesus. He's ha really having me study Mark 16. Um, and if you don't know, I talked about it yesterday, but like we have a lot of Christians who are scared to fulfill the Great Commission. And the reason they're scared is because they don't see anything. And I wasn't doing this. And the reason that I wasn't fulfilling the Great Commission is because I had never seen any signs either. Like I hadn't seen signs. I have, I've had good preaching in my life and instilled in me, but I have not had signs follow people like follow people in everyday services. I've had, I've seen people be healed and, and I've seen things happen, but it wasn't following anyone that I was close to. And I didn't have the fear of the Lord. So because I didn't really truly revere and for the Lord, I didn't glorify him in my body and in my speech. And because I wasn't glorifying him, I had a hard time submitting my body to him to fulfill the great commission. And I, at this service, I was completely set free. I was set free. And now I feel at liberty for, to fulfill the great commission. I am so thankful for the general call. I used to be one of those people who were like, Lord, what's my call? What's my call? What's my call? What's like, what's a special purpose you have for my life? Literally, if I, all I do my entire life is get to fulfill the great commission, I will be so satisfied. I will be completely beyond satisfied. I, not that I don't care about the special call, but Lord, if, 
if this is it, then this is it, and I'm grateful, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the general call. So, so thankful for the general call. I'm going to read this verse to you, and then I'm kind of, I might preach it for a few seconds, but the verse that I'm reading is chapter 16 in Mark, and starting at verse 6, the angel said to him, but he said to him, which is an angel, but he said to him, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who is crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. See the place where they laid him. See the place where they laid him. That stuck out to me a lot and it never had before. Lord, help me with this. Help me with this. I had demonic forces preparing me, trying to get me to lay in a tomb that I should not have been in. There are some people watching this who feel like they're in tombs. There are some people watching this who feel like they're being prepared for nothing, that they have no purpose, that they can't fulfill the Great Commission, they can't do what God has called them to do. This was a tomb. This was literally a tomb that the enemy wanted to lay me in. But it says here, it says here, he is not here. See the place where they, where they laid him. There's going to be people looking at you in your life and they're going to be like, she's not there anymore. He's not there anymore. This is where, they, this is where the, he was laying. This is where she was laying. She's not where she used to be. He's not where that he used to be. He's not here anymore. I'm looking for the living among the dead. That's what they're going to be doing. They're going to be looking for you in a tomb, but you're not going to be in that tomb. You're not going to be in that tomb and they're going to notice it. A miracle has happened. A miracle has taken place in my body. Let this be a sign to you. Get up, run, tremble before the Lord and run out of your tomb. Get out of this tomb. Thank you for watching this video. Like and subscribe below. I'll see you next time.